All right, now let's expose some of the rear workings of this engine. It could very well be, it could very well be as well that these were not even leaking. The only thing that could have been leaking are the valve covers and the O-ring inside of there. Uh, if that's the case, I'd be kind of pissed because I did all this work. However, if I did replace them in car again, they leaked again, then uh, then I would have been out some money again, and yeah. Could have been leaking there. And if there were to be an oil leak, that's definitely where it would be. But I don't know, it looks like a pretty good, pretty good uh, bond there. Doesn't look like these ones leaked. That's pretty wild how you have the coolant port coming right through the back there. All right, let's get started in removing the timing uh, setup to get rid of this upper cam carrier. In order to do so, we will need to put the, the damper back on, rotate the engine over so we can lock the cams in place. So I'm gonna rotate the engine clockwise now looking at the front of it, so I can bring up the threaded holes which the cam locks lock into here. I'm gonna use cam lock tool T40070. All right, now that the cams are locked in, we can go ahead and start removing the timing chain. Before we do that though, definitely want to mark where all our phasers are relative to the timing chain. All the teeth line up so when everything's put back together it all goes in the exact same way. Don't eat that. And I'm going to rotate this guy a little bit because we got to lock the crankshaft in as well. Oh, down, down. See that little machined out groove? That's where the tip of this guy will fit in. And I assume I'd be able to feel once it bottoms out. So I just started in most of the way. Should be able to rotate this just a little bit further. Yep, that's locked in. Felt a definite stop. Remove the timing chains, it's fairly simple. Just have to tension this with the screwdriver, very slowly push it back. This one was definitely very hard to do. This one compressed nicely, it has a little bleed hole. This one does not have a bleed hole somewhere. So, just be very careful with it. I hope it didn't damage the timing chain. Now that they're locked in, uh, we should be able to remove these bolts here. Got the chain off, tensioner is still locked in. Now we can remove this side. On these tensioners, there's actually also a spec. Um, I don't know what the actual number is, but you could do a visual inspection to tell if they're still good. Normally, this one looks, uh, all of them actually look fine, because you see the teeth have a nice round ridge to them. If they're worn down, then they have a, kind of a jagged profile. 
these are all free. We can separate everything. Uh, just in case though, I'm going to also mark the camshafts in the upward position. Because uh, they do, everything does have to come out. Now the only thing left to remove the cam carriers is to uh, undo all these bolts. To remove the upper cam carrier, work outwards, inwards in a cross fashion. Huh. Uh I'd say I'd say yeah, they're uh this seal's pretty well done. Look at this. The whole thing's dry, snapping apart. That's not sealing anything anymore. In other news, um it appears the cam carrier was actually not leaking to the outside. So it's kind of a bummer, but as long if I fix one thing and that's oil getting into the spark plug wells, I'll feel happy. And there it is. That is the disassembly of the cam carriers. So honestly, I'm just going to send it. And right now, I'm just going to flip it over and start taking the oil, lower oil pan off. All right, to take the oil pan off. Bent this power steering line out of the way a little bit. Not bent, but I flexed it out of the way. Now, can go ahead, put these over here, and go ahead and start removing all these bolts. Honestly, that sounds like a pretty good seal. I don't think enough coolant when I had the engine over would have slipped through this hole here which is the oil dipstick tube but then the question is where does that oil come from it's kind of all over here I mean, that doesn't really matter because maybe the, it was, the engine was sitting over a little bit I do have a sample of some old oil I'm going to send out to have analyzed just to see what's going on because if the engine oil comes out good then there's no point of even pulling it out after discovering coolant in the oil, I'm going to remove all the spark plugs and just see if there's any that are showing uh, a clean uh, tip. If so, then we have a suspect cylinder. However, last time I did this when I changed the plugs, uh, I didn't see any indication of coolant entering any of the cylinders. This is uh, cylinder number six. Sooty, normal looking. Seven, sooty. Slight white marking. 
Nothing crazy. Eight. A little bit of oil deposits, I think. Nine. Normal. Ten. Normal. This is six and this is seven. This looks like oil to me. Very oily. Oily. Normal. Oh, that's a nasty thread. Very oily. There we are. Oily, dirty plugs. Some of them quite wet. Some of them look normal.